Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Day two. Okay, so Sally Schaefer yesterday inspired us to think more about how music uh, can make us healthier. And uh, did anyone listen to the three songs that were playing as you walked into the room and have any kind of guesses as to who were singing those songs? And maybe we could hear little bits of them again to refresh your memories. I still got my health, so what do I care? My best friend of life is a glass solitaire. But I still got my health, so what do I care? By fashion and pop free. Who is it? Okay, no guesses? That was Bette Midler. Okay, next please. Now try to try to think more. Well me known for eating cookie when me don't they shout cookie trying to throw loyal fans a curve. So What's he doing eating fish or vegetable dish? Manny sure. Cookie Monster, excellent. It's funny how you knew Cookie Monster but did not know Bette Midler. Okay, third one. I know someone's yeah, going to get this. Season and prepare your foods because you don't want to lose vitamins and minerals and that's the jewel. Life brings life. It's valuable. So I eat what come from the ground. It's natural. Let your food be your medicine. Uh -huh. No excedrin. Uh -huh. Strictly herbs and raised from the sun because I got melanin and drink water. I'm looking at Marguerite and... Uh, She's, she's not, I don't think she's coming up with it. Uh, Bernie Busher. <laughs> Bernie Busher, that's a good one. Well, we, had, we, we, didn't have, we only had a picture of Cookie. Uh, the third one was a rap band called Dead Prez. But they sang a very healthy song. So there you go. That was my version of my three songs to start the day inspired by uh, Sally Schaefer. And by the way, yesterday, some of the remarks that I heard about humility and confidence um, struck a chord with me. Uh, when Sally became the chairman of our board, um, she gave me one goal, and that was to learn how to play golf. Um, and there was a reason behind that. Uh, golf has to be the best way to learn humility ever invented. So I've got that down now. And I decided to move on, as some of you know, to Zumba. Now, Zumba uh, was quite challenging yesterday. Uh, who was at the Zumba class yesterday? Yeah, OK, Zumba friends. Yeah. Um, you know, I just danced to my own drummer. Uh, during that class, but I think I burned a few calories. This is the time that's uh, best for me uh, to thank everybody, uh, again, in the spirit of uh, making sure that we say I'm sorry and thank you. Uh, I have a few thank yous to make today, and the, the, um, the first one is to the partners that we have in, our, in the room. Uh, many of you are partners of the Colorado Health Foundation. You uh, do the work that helps us be accountable for the resources that we steward. So would you give yourselves a big round of applause? Thank you. You guys are doing the work every day, and we appreciate it so much. And of course, um, I, I, uh, we couldn't put on this terrific event without our wonderful production team, uh, led by Sarah Porter Osborne, who's in the back of the room. I believe this is her seventh uh, symposium, and her trusty sidekick, who's more than a sidekick, uh, Kim Ribich, who's been fabulous. So thank you very much uh, for a great event. 
Um, our communications team, led by Taryn Ford, who's also at the back of the room, has been phenomenal in making sure that everybody in the world, not just in America, not just in Colorado, but everybody in the world knows that the Colorado Health Symposium is going on these three days. So thank you very much to our great communications team for really uh, being the lead entity in this group. That picture, oh, you don't have it up yet. I'm just seeing it on the screen, Never mind. Um, and finally, uh, Somebody asked me yesterday what I was most excited about at the foundation. And you know, there's a lot of things that we're doing that I'm really, really excited about. But the thing that I'm most excited about is we have the best team of employees that we've ever had at the Colorado Health Foundation. And would the TCHF team, those of you that are in the room today, uh, please stand up so we can acknowledge your incredible work. These guys are truly, truly fantastic. And um, yesterday, Sally um, thanked our board. I also very much thank our board and thank Sally for her incredible leadership. She's put her stamp uh, on the symposium, uh, as you've all seen, but also on the work that we do uh, back in Denver and throughout our state. So um, thank you to Sally Schaefer very much. I know you're here somewhere. There she is, great. Um, thanks, Sal, for everything. So yesterday, Alan Weil reminded us that um, bringing uh, the message home to personal stories was a good thing to do. Um, last year, I think it was my daughter getting married. Um, but this year, I'm going back in time. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of my ancestors. Uh, because it struck me that they uh, lived long and healthy lives for a reason. This is my grandmother, Helen Robinson. This picture was taken in Estes Park. She lived in Chicago, uh, but came to Estes Park every summer uh, to ride horses. She was the first woman in the West to wear pants while riding a horse. So, way to go, Goggy! And you know how they say things skip generations? I am her granddaughter. She was way ahead of her time. She gave up her opera career to get married, but didn't let that stop her from leaving her family for a year to go to Paris and uh, take classes at the Sorbonne. So she was a woman ahead of her time. She um, was blessed, I'm sure, with good genes. Uh, but also, when we talk about DNA and zip code, she obviously um, lived before zip codes, uh, but um, she had the advantages of living in a healthy community that inspired uh, health every day and had the education and the resources to be able to enjoy uh, that kind of life that led to her living 96 years of health. Um, she never was, was sick. She died in her sleep at 96. And um, who knows, was it DNA or uh, her quote unquote zip code at the time? The next relative, so I've got this on both sides. So that's my mother's side. Now look at Elizabeth Stone. I mean, there's a book written about this woman, and do you think they could have found a better picture? <laughs> this was the only picture of her in the book. She is my great, great, great aunt on my father's side. She, her claim to fame is she was the first white woman in Fort Collins. So you can still go see Auntie Stone's original house, which they preserved in Fort Collins. And um, she went there with her husband in the 1860s uh, and basically took care of the miners 
And the army people that were there protecting the white people against the uh, Indians at the time, the Arapaho Indians were there and it was at a time where things, people weren't getting along all that well. And um, Elizabeth Stone, so when I first looked at this picture, I thought, God, I bet she didn't live very long. I mean, you know, Sally tells me you gotta be happy, you gotta listen to music, you gotta smile a lot uh, in order to lead a healthy life. She doesn't look all that happy to me. But when I read the book, she was a gracious hostess running the hotel in Fort Collins, the first hotel, and she also lived to 96 years old, which would have been quite a feat back in the day. I don't know what the average lifespan of a woman was then, but um, I'm sure she exceeded it by a mile. Okay, so my final slide of family. This is Bob and Leslie Warhover. At the memory tour, I took them on um, two summers ago to celebrate their 70th wedding anniversary. My dad just turned 96, and my mom just turned 93. They've now been married for 72 years. They met at Elkhorn Lodge in Estes Park, um, Colorado. So um, they also uh, were educated, um, had resources, um, lived a very healthy lifestyle, and as a result, um, are still uh, kicking around. Um, and um, gosh, I just had to show you guys this picture. <laughs> so that's my message, thank you. <laughs> that's my personal story about how fortunate I am, I think, to have the genes um, that will give me many more years if I make sure that I take care of those genes um, by living a healthy lifestyle. So I just wanted to say a few things about the Colorado Health Foundation's work and what we're in the business of. You know, we're really in the business of transformation. Um, some people might say, well, they're a grant maker, they make grants. We like to think of ourselves as making change and making change through investments in our terrific partners throughout the state of Colorado. And in order to make change, you have to either change the environment or you have to change a system, or you have to change policy. And we work in all three of those areas. And I wanted to um, just let you know what goals we're trying to achieve uh, by 2023 uh, in all three of those areas. And it will take all of us in this room and many more to achieve these goals. This isn't just a goal we've set, it's goals that we hope will be adopted uh, by many of you in Colorado joining with us um, to lower childhood obesity to less than 10% in the state in 2023, by 2023. That's changing the environment. We're gonna need to change the environment to do that. We're gonna need to continue to invest in healthy places, in um, Lamars and the Arvadas and the Westwoods of Colorado and many, many more communities, in housing developments in Denver and throughout Colorado to ensure people are living in housing that promotes health, in workplaces, in schools, um, anywhere where people are, we can put health at the center of the planning um, and I think achieve environmental changes that once again will make the healthy choice uh, the easy choice, which is our continued slogan around that area. In systems change, what we're looking for is to have 95% of Coloradans insured by 2023, 2023 and less than 4% or less underinsured by 2023. Um, in order to do that, again, we're gonna have to look for real systems change. Now some of this has already begun. Connect for Health Colorado had a significant first year. Um, we want to congratulate Gretchen Hammer on a terrific year of chairing the board of um, Connect for Health Colorado. Gretchen, are you, are you here? We'll tell, if you're not, we'll tell you that we clap for you. 
And Sharon O'Hara, who I think will be here later as the incoming chair of Connect for Health Colorado. Really terrific, unbelievable leadership uh, for that organization that is truly changing systems with the help of a lot of other, uh, a lot, a lot of other folks, including insurance companies. And again, we need both the public and the private sector in this work. Another activity that I think will change the system around healthcare delivery and payment reform is the collective impact work we are doing with a great team of partners. Um, I won't, I'm sure I won't mention them all, uh, but Civic, um, Colorado Health Institute, CoRio, QHN, Health Teamworks, um, all involved in really creating a uh, common goal around changing the way we deliver care and pay for care in Colorado. Now that starts, as we learned yesterday, with information. It's really, really difficult to make systems change unless you have the information, the data, that it's analyzed in a way that makes it understandable in order to do that. And all those organizations are really, really coming to the forefront in both producing and analyzing useful data that will make help us make those important decisions and also help us make the decisions as consumers around healthcare. Uh, without knowing how much something costs um, or the quality, it's pretty hard to make the decision. So we thank them for that. The third goal that we're trying to achieve um, is that Coloradans will experience two days or less every month of feeling um, under the weather, so to speak. This seems like kind of an odd goal to me. We learn about it, I think we get the data through a survey, uh, but it's the closest thing we could come to realizing whether our healthcare delivery system is actually achieving uh, what we want it to. And I have an exciting um, piece of information today uh, that you'll see um, might come across your um, email that the Colorado Health Foundation has just made its first private sector investment in a company called MyStrength. Um, MyStrength is a technology app that is used for uh, mental health treatment, of all things. And our investment uh, will make this application, which is evidence-based, uh, highly regarded uh, mental health application available to both public and commercial systems. So the safety net as well as private uh, clinics will be uh, able to um, access my strength for their uh, patients. And I see Jesse back in the back of the room. Um, Jesse Wolf has led this effort. You know, this, this goes to this transformation comment that I want to make. Um, we can't do this through philanthropy. We can't change the environment, systems, policy only through philanthropy, obviously. It takes government, but it also really takes the private sector. Private sector investments will take things to a scale that philanthropy would never be able to. Um, our partnership with the Urban Land Institute is another example of the private sector being able to build healthy places, allowing people to make the healthy choice the easy choice every day, um, and that's built by, invested in, the private sector. Our uh, effort to invest in the private sector on those, to those companies that align with our mission and our goals, I think will help us um, really leverage the work that we're doing in the nonprofit sector. So exciting um, that we could make our first investment. I know there'll be many more to come. Lots of activity in Colorado in the private sector around health. So um, that's really cool. And finally, so I've talked about the environment, I've talked about the system change we're working on, and policy change is, of course, the other area that's critical. Uh, policy change is long, hard slug um, sometimes, and uh, we have some terrific advocates in the room uh, today that are our partners, and we have just um, unleashed a, um, a funding opportunity for um, advocacy organizations we're willing to or we want to invest um, several million dollars in advocacy over the next few years that's packaged with an actual coordinated effort 
uh, among those advocacy organizations um, to, to actually have the greatest impact possible. And the second policy uh, um, item that I want to highlight is the formation of our new um, 501c4 organization called Advocacy for a Healthy Colorado. This will really um, get grassroots support um, really people in the trenches to advocate at their school boards and their communities with their county commissioners for those kinds of policies that will make their, their uh, communities healthier. And I know um, Jake is here. Jake Williams is the first executive director. There he is back there. Raise your hand again, Jake. Um, of advocacy for a healthy Colorado and uh, we're really excited that this organization has been launched and hope you all will um, engage and join with Jake in our advocacy efforts um, to, um, to really change the world in which we live so that transformative change around the culture of health can really happen. So that's, um, that's do you want to put up the slide that says join with us now? Because I think that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, together we have begun this work. I forgot exactly what it said. Together we have begun this work, and together we're going to finish it. Um, so join with us at the Colorado Health Foundation to continue to make Colorado the healthiest state in the nation by changing our environment, our systems, and our policy. Thank you. Um, so a couple of, um, we're ready to get on with our morning, a couple of items that I just wanted to make sure you remember is that again, we will have our discovery sessions this afternoon after our noon speaker. Um, seating will be limited like it was yesterday. We had three or four sessions I think yesterday that were full, maxed out. Um, so if you've got one that you really want to get to, um, you know, don't uh, waste time uh, getting there. Get to that room. They're exciting. And yesterday we got some great feedback on some of the discovery act, um, sessions and the fact that they were um, really much more inter interactive um, than they've been in the past. So today.